Today, we're going to be turning a thrift store $1 knife into a $500 chef's knife. So we picked up three knives from thrift stores today. We've got this one, this one, and this one. Now I think this guy is going to be our best candidate. Now the reason that I'm going to choose this one is because it is going to be, I think, the easiest to get a new handle on there. These two, I have no idea what's going on inside that handle. And they both have serrated edges, along with the fact that they're both really, really, really thin. So I think this is going to be the best candidate. We'll be able to grind nice bevels on it to make it cut really well, and we will put a beautiful handle on there. Let's get started on planning how we're going to turn this thing into a usable knife. Right now, it's just a hair under nine inches long, and I think what I'm going to do is turn it into a little bit of a santoku shape. We're going to grind our bevels all the way up to the spine so that we have a lot less friction. We might even throw an S grind in this guy and then we're going to do a beautiful wooden handle. Uh, we're going to get rid of this kind of nasty plywood handle that's on there. It's actually diamond wood but it looks like plywood and we'll probably end up reshaping this handle a little bit as well. So with that, let's jump on in. Well, we've got these bevels ground to 600 grit. We chopped off that end. It looks way better this way, in my opinion. And we've got that edge nice and thin, sitting pretty at about a thousandth of an inch, or uh, 0.03 millimeters. So it's really, really thin. That should make sharpening it or just a breeze, and it means that it'll have a really nice laser-like cutting action. I'm going to stop us right there to pay the bills with our fantastic sponsor, Native. I've been using their natural aluminum and paraben-free deodorants for over a year now, and I absolutely love them. What I like about it is all of their scents. They just smell fresh. They don't smell like some artificial, hey, this is you smelling good smell you get at the normal retail store. Citrus and herbal musk is the scent I use every day. I love it. They've also got an incredible subtle charcoal scent, cucumber and mint. Very fresh. They're made with natural products you're familiar with, like shea butter and coconut oil. They're vegan, cruelty-free, and you can even get them in plastic-free dispensers. Pretty cool. Candy cane. Very good. Their deodorants keep me dry after a long, hot day in the workshop. They've got an incredibly wide selection of natural products on their websites, aside from deodorant. But I want you to save 33% on your native deodorant pack. It's usually $36, but you're going to get it for $24, as well as free shipping in the US, in the UK, and a bunch of other countries. So please go down in the description below, get yourself that deodorant pack starts smelling sweet. Thank you, Native. Let's jump back in the video. So we're going to go ahead and slap it on here now and start hand sanding. Well, we've got this thing hand sanded up to a nice, dirty thousand grit. That means it needs to be cleaned up. I like to do that after I finish the handle. And that brings us to our next point, which is this is the material we're going to be using for the handle. It is a South African curly hardwood. Niels Vandenberg gave it to us. It looks really, really nice. It's an awesome handle material. So we're going to run next door to the wood shop, cut ourselves off a couple scales, and get a nice handle fit up for this thing. All right, it's now time to do the pinholes for our handle. So I'm going to wrap some tape around the edge. Okay, so we ended up drilling four different holes and they're all 1 16th inch holes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a piece of tape on this side of the handle and a piece of tape on this scale. I'm going to put a dot of super glue between them and hold them down like that. And what that means is that I, it's held securely onto the piece of wood and I'll be able to drill my four holes and then peel off the tape. So we're going to do that on one side and we're going to flip it over and do it on the other side.
Now that we've got it ground up and it's looking nice, we're gonna go ahead and hand sand the spine of the knife, the tang, and the handle. Well, this thing came out absolutely spectacularly. We were able to get a nice full flat grind coming down to a nice thin edge. You guys can see that the edge actually flexes out on the tip of my finger, which means that that edge is nice and thin. It's gonna glide through food like nobody's business. We put a beautiful South African hardwood handle on there. We got the spine and the choil rounded out. Overall, we turned that kind of ugly, nasty $1 knife into what's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful knife to use. That being said, this is still a $1 knife and it's got the steel of a $1 knife in it. It's got some junky stainless steel in it that is hardened up to about 56 Rockwell, which is not as hard as I would like it to be if we're gonna have a high performance chef's knife. Though this is a cool knife, it's not gonna be the best solution if you want a great knife to have in the kitchen. Fortunately, however, We've got a solution for you. We've been working on this knife for a little over a year now. Uh, we're calling it the Gallatin Chef's Knife after the Gallatin Valley where we live here in Montana. It is what I wanted to be the best chef's knife on the market. But don't take my word for it. We're gonna take both of these knives to a professional chef who lives here in the Gallatin Valley and see what he thinks. So we're here at the Bozeman Supper Club with Austin from Rad Foods. Austin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, my name's Austin. I own the Bozeman Supper Club and a catering company called Rad Foods Montana. Um, we do a lot of high-end events in the Big Sky area here in Bozeman. Um, looking forward to giving it a go. We'll put it through its paces today. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that one performs and then we'll let them compare it to, uh, say, this knife right here. So with the thrift store knife, there were a few things that I really liked and a few things that I didn't. The knife had a great edge. It started and cut through most of the prep work. Say we were making a soup and went through everything really easily. I did notice that the edge of the knife dulled rather quickly. You could feel it on the grain of the cutting board. The teeth of the blade were actually catching, uh, which meant that it was sharp. But as we went through the vegetables, it started to dull. I, the ergonomics, as we talked a second ago, uh, my knuckles were dragging with the blade. These knives are, you know, if you want to take a thrift store knife, a one dollar knife and turn it into a really nice knife, you can do it, but it's gonna be high maintenance, you're gonna have to be sharpening it pretty constantly, and you're probably not gonna get the exact right shape that you want out of it. But if you're not one to turn a one dollar knife into a four hundred dollar knife, we've got a four hundred dollar knife all ready for you. We really wanna see what Austin can do with something like this. Let's give it a shot. Incredibly sharp. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Putting this knife through the paces, there's really not much I don't like about it. It's pretty versatile. Uh, the weight is great, the balance is great, the grip is lovely. It's something that I can do both tip or uh, fine details with as well as chopping. I mean, we've done everything from batonets to mints to brunoise. Um, the knife handled really well. What we put it through without having honed it afterwards. I'm impressed. I like the shape, I like the tip, I like how we're focusing a lot of energy right here on the first curve of the knife, yet I can do chop work with the back end of the knife. It performed really well, and I'm glad this one's mine. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to see how it how it holds up to, to serious work. And yeah, yeah, Austin, thank you so much for putting it through its paces. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. And these knives are going to be available in a very limited quantity on Friday, the 18th of December at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So make sure to, to stay tuned for that. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Also, big thank you to today's sponsor, which was Native. Go ahead and get that discount code for the deodorant pack in the description down below. And I will see you guys on the next one.